So if you know this song, I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. Please join us from home or if you're driving down the road, wherever you are, please help us sing. <clears throat> well, I started out traveling for the Lord so many, many years, years ago. ago. I've had, had a lot of heartache, met a lot of grief and woe. Oh, but, but when, when I, I was stumbled and I was stumbled down, and there I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. To me and he tried to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want, and worldly fame. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. There's nothing in this world that'll ever take the place of God's love. All the silver and gold wouldn't buy a touch from above. When my soul meets you and I begin feeling his power. Thank the Lord, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want. And worldly fame, if I could, still wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow Though the, the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around He's offered everything that's got a name All the wealth I want and worldly fame If I could still wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Yes, amen well, I trust that's all of our desire today Is that I would not take anything for my journey now um, if you have started out for the Lord this morning, you have, as another song says, you have gone too far to turn back now. I know that there have been a lot of trials and problems and tests that all of us have faced in life, and there's going to be some more in the future, but we have something so much more wonderful in the Lord. So let's all stay faithful and keep pressing on. I desire an interest in your prayers this morning as we do look into the word of the Lord. Um, this week I have been, I've been sick most of the week, pretty, pretty bad sick. And I'm thankful for the strength that we have this morning to be here to share some of the word of God with you. The Lord had given me a message this week and I'd like to address just a few basics of Christian decision making. And we are often faced with personal internal questions of what do I do? I don't know how many times you've asked yourself that. I've asked myself that a lot of times. What, what do I do? Um, in major issues, what do I do for a, a job? When you're, especially when you're young and you just got out of high school, what do I do for a job? What about school? Where do I live? Where do I go? Who should I marry? Um, in relationships, there are challenges that everyone faces in relationships with people. It might be in your marriage. It might be with your children. It might be on your job. It might be in the congregation. There are challenges that we face, and sometimes we ask ourselves the question, what do I do? Um, in smaller daily decisions, should I go there? Should I listen to that? Should I watch that? What, what do I do? And we are faced with these daily questions um, that are implicitly, we ask ourselves, what do I do? Now, sometimes we, it is implicit. In other times, we actively, explicitly ask ourselves the question, what do I do? And sometimes the answer is, I don't know what to do. The Lord does not want us to be left without guidance in the major decisions that we face in life. And so the answer to that question, though, is different depending upon our motivation and desire. Before we can adequately answer the question, what do I do? 
We've got another question we need to ask, and that is, where do you want to end up? So if you're traveling with someone in the car and they're driving, and they come up to an intersection, and they ask you a question, do I turn left or right? What is the answer to that question? Well, if I were there, I would have another question. Well, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to town or do you want to get on the interstate? If you want to go to town, turn right. And if you want to get on the interstate, you turn left. Sometimes when we ask ourselves the question, what do I do? What do I do? There is another more basic question that we need to address that is in our life. And that is exactly what Joshua was dealing with with the children of Israel in the 24th chapter of Joshua. And we're going to read a very familiar passage of Scripture. Joshua was before the people, and he said, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and they said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. And they began to acknowledge God. And then Joshua had a response to him. He said, you cannot serve the Lord. For he is a holy God. He's a jealous God. And that kind of is like, what do you mean we can't serve the Lord? The people said, yes, we will serve the Lord. And then Joshua said something else. He said, now therefore put away the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. In other words, we can address the daily decisions of life, and I will be the first to acknowledge again that sometimes we frankly don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Maybe I don't know the exact words to say. I don't know every T to cross and I to dot, but the Lord has given us guidance to know primarily what to do. But it comes back down to a more base question, where do you want to end up? When people say, well, I, I'm just looking to the Lord's will, I just, I don't know what to do. Do you want to make heaven your home or not? Because here is the reality. If you want to get wealthy, and you say, I want to amass wealth, there are directions and there is a roadmap to wealth that you can follow. It will change your spending habits. It will change your saving habits. It will change your work ethic. It will change the amount of time that you come to church service. It will change the amount of time you spend with your family because I have a plan and I want to get wealthy. And so there's a way to get wealthy. There is a roadmap to get there. If you say, well, I just want pleasure. I want the pleasure of the flesh. Do you know what? We can make a list this morning of things you can do to bring pleasure to the flesh. It doesn't mean it's right, but it means there is an avenue. If you want pleasure, turn to the left. This is where you get it. But if we want to serve the Lord this morning, the Lord has given us directions and a roadmap that we can know how to make heaven our home. Which means then on some of these secondary questions, who do I marry? Where do I go? Where do I live? Where do I go to school? Should I further my education? Um, should I wear that? Should I put that on? Is, should I listen to that? Is it okay to watch that? A lot of times those answers to those questions come back down to that more primary question. Do you want to serve the Lord or not? And if you want to serve the Lord, I would remind us to practically ask ourselves that question. And spiritual and intellectual honesty is very important when we have questions before us. Because we can cover up and say, yes, I want to serve the Lord. But I'm talking about, should I, is it, what do I do here? In a relationship where someone's caused you a problem, it's like, I don't know what to do here. Do you want to serve the Lord? If we ask ourselves that question, we say yes, we will find the Lord has a way of beginning to give the answers to some of these secondary questions that we have. It is by, it is, 
Let me put it this way. The answer to these second questions is predicated upon the truth of the first question. Where do you want to end up? Who do you want to serve? Where do you want to go? If we want to serve the Lord, we are going to make decisions that will further our relationship with God. If we're interested in wealth, if we're interested in education, if we're interested in pleasure, there are things that will define that. If we're interested in in catering to the flesh, whether it's the pleasure of the flesh or the hurts of the flesh that occur in life, there's a roadmap to get there. Well, if you want to serve the Lord, Joshua said, then put away the gods. You can't serve the Lord and also serve these. So given our desire this morning, if we accept that our desire is to serve the Lord, then the Lord has given us a roadmap to do that. David said in Psalms 119, 105, he said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Paul also told Timothy in 2 Timothy, he said, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, what do I do? If we want to serve the Lord, then all of the secondary questions of life many times will be answered when we come back down and say, I want to serve the Lord, so how do I serve the Lord? It's here in his word. There is no place in here it says, Michael, in this situation, you do such and such. And that's where sometimes I found myself in place with some frustrations, spiritual frustrations, and sometimes fleshly frustrations. Say, I don't know what to do. Just don't know what to do. What do I do here? But when I have come back to the Lord and said, Lord, I want to please you, and I don't know exactly maybe how to handle this situation, but I look into the word of God, the Lord has been so faithful to begin to lay down a path to follow that will keep me in a place that my relationship can grow stronger with God. That if I were to deviate from that path, it would hinder my relationship with God. So I want to encourage us this morning as we look a little bit more into the word of God to understand that the secondary decisions and questions that we have of what do I do, many times are predicated upon that primary question, where do you want to end up? So let's look into the Word of God. Galatians chapter 5, very familiar passage. Galatians chapter 5, and we will begin reading. He talks about some of the works of the flesh here in Galatians 5. He said, walk in the spirit, in verse 16, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so you cannot do the things that ye would. If ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Again, what do I do? It comes down to very basic decisions in life. What do I do? Do you want to serve the Lord or do you want to serve the flesh? And if our answer is, I want to serve the Lord, he gives a list of things that will begin to give answers to a lot of these secondary questions. He said, now the works of the flesh are manifest or revealed in this. Adultery. So I I just don't know what to do. This is something not to do. Don't commit adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness. What about practical decisions? People say, should I go here or not? I'm not sure what to do. If there is uncleanness, my desire is to serve the Lord. This tells me what to do. He said, that's a work of the flesh. Don't do it. Um, He said, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred. Many times we're faced with decisions in life and interacting with people and say, well, what should I do? Well, he said here, if it's hatred is a work of the flesh, animosity, 
So that means that in discussions with people, in dealing with problems, we say, I don't know what to do. Do you want to serve the Lord? If, if our words are founded upon bitterness and hatred and animosity, we know what to do. He said, these are works of the flesh. He said, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envies, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I told you before, I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we say, what do I do? I, I have this relationship. What do I do? Don't commit adultery. Don't commit fornication. I have people problems. There are people that aren't treating me right. I, what do I do? Well, don't do anything out of envy. Don't do anything out of strife. If you know doing this is going to cause strife, even if they're not doing what's right, he gave us a roadmap. We know what to do then. If I do this, it's out, it's striving. Okay, I'm not going to do that, Lord. Thank you, because I want to serve you. Well, he said emulations, to emulate, to be like someone, or striving would be to surpass someone, wouldn't it? Think about the gods of the world. And we, we live in a time in the entertainment industry, in the sports world, in those things. People say, well, there's nothing wrong with getting highly involved in those things. Wait a minute. What do I do? What is the Lord pleased with? If, if, if we are serving in the spirit of emulation and strife, trying to do better than someone else, trying to supersede someone, and that is what is uh, the spirit that's in our life and what's controlling us, that's going to hinder us in our walk with God. That's going to hinder us. That's going to hinder us from doing what the Lord wants us to do. That answers a lot of questions in life. We, we are faced with being pulled to the entertainment world and the sports world in our society. This scripture tells us some things not to do because it caters to the flesh. Envy, murders, drunkenness, anything that lends itself to these things, we need to recognize where do I want to end up? You say, well, I'm not, I'm not um, striving here and I'm not committing idolatry and I'm not, this is an unclean in and of itself. But the question is, if what I'm doing today is taking me closer to those things, I know what to do. See, the struggle then isn't, I don't know what to do. My struggle is, Lord, help me to do what I know I need to do. That's the struggle many times when we say, I don't know what to do. Well, he went on to say, um, he told us what the works of the fruit of the Spirit was. He said the fruit of the Spirit is love, and it's joy, and it's peace, and it's long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, meekness, and temperance. Temperance is balance, moderation. People say, I just don't know what to do about this. I've got a pro I don't know what to do. Is it of love? What about relationships? Do you know that this is a roadmap to strong relationships? Um, because it tells us what spirit to have. People say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. What does the Bible say? He says to love. See, that, that deals with the condition of our heart. He said to have joy and peace, be long-suffering. If our actions and the words that we speak do not bring about peace and joy and long-suffering, then, then don't do it. But this is what we know to do this morning. I want to encourage everyone that may be asking themselves and saying, I don't know what to do or what do I do? This is what we need to do this morning. If our desire is to serve the Lord, I want my actions to be full of the love of God. I want to be long-suffering. You know, I've found that the scripture teaches being just and fair and right. And so I can stand up when someone else is not being treated right. I can stand up for them, see, because it's not a personal issue. I can stand up for them with justice and what is truth and what is right and what is fair. And, I, and we can do that with love. 
But do you know that when it comes to us and there are injustices done to us, there's a struggle then because it's like, well, justice, we need justice. But this is where the Lord says, you know what? You need to humble yourself. You need to be long-suffering. You need to forgive your enemies. Those that aren't treating you right, commit them in the hands of God. This is what to do. There are a lot of marriages that are in trouble this morning. All over the world, the enemy is attacking marriages in the world, and he's attacking marriages among the saints. And people say, I don't know what to do. This is what to do this morning. This is what to do. Love, forgive, be long-suffering. It works because it's predicated again upon our decision, I want to please the Lord. And if it doesn't please other people, this is what will please the Lord. Not strife, not carnality, not bickering, not pride, not standing up for ourselves, but rather submitting ourselves in the hands of God. Situation, I don't know what to do, but wait a minute. I want to serve the Lord. I know that. And then we have an aha moment. Ah, I know what to do. I'll humble myself. I'll show love. I'll show forgiveness. In marriage, speaking a little bit more about marriage, regardless of what the other person is doing, the scripture gives guidance about what a husband should do to love his wife as Christ loved the church. That's what to do. Husbands, if it seems like your wife is just difficult to get along with, and it seems like that she's just not being what she ought to be, and you may be scratching your head and saying, I just don't know what to do. The scripture gives us guidance of what to do. You love your wife as Christ loved the church. You show her consideration. You show her, um, you put her welfare above your own. As a husband also, so what do we do? To fill our God-given roles. It's a husband's job to provide for his wife. It is not the wife's job to provide for her husband. I know there are disabilities and there are circumstances that change that sometimes. But the the general rule and guide that the Lord gave us is a man is to step up and take care of his wife and provide for his wife and to do for her. And then to the wife, it's her job to, to love and to respect her husband. Even if a husband, you may think my husband is stubborn and hard-headed. And you know, it may be a little easier to preach this. No, no one's listening but my family right here in the flesh. So anybody that's listening this morning, you may say, well, you don't know my husband. He's just hard to get along with. And I've tried this and I've tried that. And he's just stubborn and he won't listen to me. and He doesn't understand me and I just don't know what to do. My sympathies go out to husband and wives that find themselves in those types of situations. However, the Lord has not left us alone. He's given us a roadmap. He's given us direction. We say, I want to serve the Lord. So then to you wives, if your husband's kind of being a little difficult, what do you do? Respect his position if you can't respect his decision. Show respect. And you know that can many times it will begin to turn the tide of problems that are in people's marriages. Regardless of what they're doing, this is what the Lord has given for us to do. Move on a little, let's move on a little bit more. What about jobs? People say, I don't, I, what do I do? I can be a mechanical engineer, for example, or I could, should I go into business? Should I be a mechanic? Should I be an electrician? What what should I do? Well, what does the Bible say? Michael, thou shalt be... It doesn't say that, does it? The Lord has given all of us the power of choice. We are free moral agents this morning. But do you realize that if we have chosen to serve the Lord... All of the other decisions we make, again, we're going to to repeat myself, they're predicated upon our primary decision to serve the Lord. And what does the Bible say? Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and you all can quote it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, the Lord can direct you in career choices. He can open and close doors. But do you know, even before that, he gave us some guidance. Uh, what, what do I do here? It has to do with your job. It has to do with your career. It has to do with education. It has to do with where you live. Should I move over here or should I not? The Bible doesn't put your name down and say what state you should live in. It doesn't do that. But he gave us his spirit to guide us and he gave us his word. And saints, I want to remind us the word of the spirit of the Lord will never contradict the leadings of the Holy Spirit. The word of God, I may have mixed that up. The word of God and the spirit will always agree. The spirit of the Lord will never contradict what the word of God says. I have heard too often people say, well, the Lord showed me such and such or the spirit the god opened up a door i believe in the providence of god this morning but i also believe according to the word of god that every door that is open the saint of god should not go through it you say well the door's open so god did oh no there are doors that will be open that god did not open what do i do seek first the kingdom of god If it is going to put you in a position that you are not under a good, strong spiritual influence and your soul can be at stake with the job you choose, with where you live, with where you get educated, and with who you get married to, the Word of God has already given guidance. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. That means then that above the pleasure of the flesh, above the fulfillment of the flesh, above the wealth and prestige that are not always sinful, but above all of those things and above family and friends, God says, seek me first. That would answer a lot of questions that people have. It would take care of a lot of the hot button issues that cause controversy among people that are professing to serve the Lord. I will just, again, very specifically, contrary to what some people say, they say, well, the the church of God has a lot of rules that you have to follow. You know, how you choose to live your life is between you and God. Now, there are some requirements for those that fulfill fill positions of leadership in the body of Christ. There are to be examples of the believers. But to say, well, I have to, the church of God has all these black and white rules. You know what? When it comes down to it at the end of the day, it's about you and your personal relationship with God. But it's going to take spiritual honesty and intellectual honesty. The spirit does not deal outside of the intellect. He deals with the intellect that God has given us. Let's let's examine it. Let's be honest with ourselves. Why do I want to do that? Am I pursuing my relationship with God or am I pursuing wealth? Am I pursuing education or am I pursuing my relationship with God? And I'm pursuing someone that I look at and think, oh, they're very attractive. I'm interested in getting to know them better. Am I interested in the flesh or am I interested in Lord? I don't want to join my life in a relationship that's going to interfere with the relationship that I have with God. That's between us and God this morning. But it takes honesty. And do you see where then many times it's not an issue of, I don't know what to do. It's an issue of, Lord, I know what to do, but I'm struggling to do it. So, Lord, that's my prayer. Give me the grace to say yes, Lord. Give me the grace to humble and do what I know that I need to do here. Well, what about where we go? I've addressed a little bit this morning. Where do we go? What we listen to? Do you know there's a very fundamental scripture that that gives us some answers? 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to what? The glory of God. You say, what do I do? This is the answer. You couple this scripture 
with the Holy Spirit and with intellectual and spiritual honesty, you don't need a group of ministers coming together and making a list of rules of where you can go and where you can't go, of what you can watch and what you can't watch, of what you can listen to and what you can't listen to, of what you can wear and what you can't wear. That's not the minister's place. When the ministry preaches the word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it is going to begin to reveal these types of things. Now, don't take exception or get hurt when a minister gives some warnings about some things and say, be careful, because if you go down this road, this thing will take you to a place that will interfere with your relationship with God. And then all of a sudden, you have people getting offended and say, who do they think they are? How they're just establishing a rule and that's commandments of men and I can do this and I'm still saved. Do you know there are a lot of things that the ministry can warn about that you can do and still be saved? But that's really not the issue. For it shouldn't be the issue. The issue should be, Lord, I want to please you. That's our primary question, Lord. Do I want to please you? Yes, Lord, I want to please you. Then when warnings come, it's like, you know, maybe I don't see it right now, but I'm going to really examine that and be honest with myself. Is this thing giving glory to God or is it lifting up flesh? Do you know it would change the way people dressed in our world? If they said, I don't want to lift myself up. I don't want to exalt myself. Yes, the scripture gives more guidance about being modest, but I want to give God glory, humble, humility, decent, modest, and I, I, when people look on us, I want them to see a reflection of, of God and his holiness and his purity. Then you don't need a list of, you don't need a list of rules. The Spirit of the Lord will give you your own list. He will give you things in your mind, guidelines. The same thing with these daily decisions. Young people that you struggle with sometimes, should I do this or not? Can I still do that and be saved? Maybe so. But what? where will it end up taking you? What's the consequence of it? So let's take a step back and say, do I want to serve the Lord? Yes. And then Joshua said, then, then put away the God. Put away the things that are going to hinder you. Is it to the glory of God? It, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, lovely, of good report. Those are the things to think on. It's interesting how in the flesh we can start rationalizing our behaviors. It's interesting how, how quickly we can begin to, to justify and excuse and say, I, I, just, I don't know what to do. But saints, the word of God has given us so much guidance as to what to do. I'm approaching the conclusion of this message. What does the word of God say? We say, what do I do? What does the Bible say? How does it affect your spirit? What spirit does he want you to have? There are times that sometimes I, I have really struggled saying, Lord, I need wisdom because I don't know what to do. Sometimes you find yourself in no-win situations. Seems like that Whatever you do, someone's going to think is wrong. It's like, well, I, I don't know what to do. But I will say it makes a big difference when we come back to the Word and the Lord, we start reading the Scriptures like, I know what to do about attitude. I know what to do about my words. I know what to do about that. And then when I can get those things aligned with God's will for my life, to have an attitude that God wants and my spirit like He wants, you know, a lot of times those other things start kind of coming into place, regardless of what anybody else does. Because this is about my relationship with God. And it's about your relationship with God. Um, our actions, that the word of God is there to direct and to guide, and it's the way that leads to life this morning. I find again, as we conclude, that the struggle that we face is oftentimes not a lack of knowledge. Many times it's really not ignorance. And sometimes we plead ignorance. I just don't know what to do. But do we really not know what to do this morning? 
I know there are some times that we're seeking God for guidance. I don't want to take away from that at all. Lord, do I make this move? Is it your will for me to move from where I am? Is it your will for me to go here to school? Lord, is it your will for me to marry this individual? Those can be real struggles. And the Lord understands that he wants to lead us by his spirit. But what does his word say about those things? What does his word say? So our struggle in many times is just being obedient to what we know the Lord is calling for. So if there are things this morning that you know, let's seek God for the grace and the power. And if we don't know, let's open up our heart that the word of God with, to, and look into the word of God that we can be honest and with integrity of heart, open up and listen to what the Lord is saying. And I am confident when we really need to know the things we don't know, we are going to hear the voice of the Lord speaking to us very quietly. This is the way. Walk ye in it. This morning, I am thankful the Lord has not left us without a guide. He has given us the word and the spirit. So what do I do? Many of you this morning have that question. What do I do? Let's take a step back and ask ourselves this question. In this situation, do I want to please the Lord? If you don't, then you can go after the flesh. But if your answer is yes, I want to please the Lord here, then make the decision and do the things that we know that please the Lord in our spirit and in our actions. And you will find that the relationship with the Lord will stay in a safe place when we do that. The Lord bless each one of you this morning.